What's up, Happy Fabricators? Welcome back to Fab Tool Friday, where I bring you a short segment on a tool that you've either seen in this shop or I've found useful in the fabrication industry. Okay, so for episode three of Fab Tool Friday, the tool that's made the cut is the Evolution Chop Saw. Okay, so if you watch any of my videos in the past, I would find it hard to believe that you have not seen me use this tool. This tool has definitely been a game changer since I got it. It's increased efficiency, accuracy, and just overall performance in the shop. So what this is, is a bi-metal chop saw. So meaning it's running at a lower RPM than a normal wood chop saw would be. And what this does is allows it to have a better speed for cutting metals. And you can cut a lot of things on this thing. We can cut steel, we can cut aluminum, I've cut stainless on it. The blades are a little, don't hold up as well with stainless. But overall, this is just a solid saw. I use it on almost every project. It folds up small, the head locks down. It has a good vise that's got a quick release on it so you can pull it back and forward, flip that guy down and lock it down. It's got multiple angle positions so you can lock your fence here down at 15 degrees, 30 degrees or 45 degrees and have quick settings. It's got a nice tall handle, so you don't have to have a special tool to get in there. This particular model has a chip tray. Now, I believe this is the 380 something 15 inch saw, and it comes with a 14 inch blade, and I've honestly never had a need to buy a 15 inch blade for it. So if I were to do it again, there's another model that is almost identical to this. It's called the 14 inch. It's the 380 14 something. Um, I'll leave a link down to both of these ones I'm referring to in the description below, but basically the only difference is it doesn't have a chip tray and it's a hundred bucks less. This saw was about 470 something dollars at the time that I purchased it. And the one without the chip tray is 370. So you don't get a chip tray, but you pay a hundred bucks less. And I'll tell you a little secret. I would say that less than half the chips end up in that tray anyways. So if I were to do it over again, I would get the one without the chip tray and just set a five gallon bucket up on the back side of the table and I'll probably have more likely chance to catch more chips that way than what this chip tray actually catches because this thing throws them everywhere. But because it throws lots of chips, it does lots of work. You can get multiple different blades to put on this thing. For the most part, I've ran just the Evolution ones, but I've also got good performance out of the Diablo blades that you can run on these guys. Um, and then there's another one called RTR from uh, Champion Tools, I believe. And that is a good blade for if you're doing thinner materials, because it's got a higher tooth count. And I found you get a lot more life out of stuff if you're doing thin sheet metal tubing and stuff like that using that Champion Tools blade. It's a little higher end on the more expensive side, but it lasts so long. But the standard blade works amazing for thicker materials. I think the biggest thing I've cut on this is a five inch diameter half wall tube, and it was only like a six second cut. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're all the way through that big thick wall tube. Whereas if you were to go at that with a standard abrasive saw, two things. Number one, you'd be there forever. Number two, that cut would be hot and super jagged and probably not straight. This thing is very accurate and true and straight. It's got a cast aluminum base and this thing is solid. I would say it weighs in at probably like, I don't know, it's pretty stout. I'm say it's probably around, probably 50 or 60 pounds. One of the things uh, that I found if you're cutting a bunch of aluminum with it is definitely get yourself some cutting wax and just stick a little bit on the teeth every once in a while and that will help the longevity of the blade and not getting aluminum galled up in it and it'll help clear those chips and you'll get better longevity out of the blade and just better performance in general. Another feature this saw comes with is a V-block. Come, came from the factory and you can drop the V-block right down on the fence of your clamp and that works great for if you're clamping down either angle iron or round tube or even what I've done is I made a couple headache racks with a diamond shape cut. So you can do a compound miter on a diamond which is kind of cool because you can stick that square tube in the V-block and then like on the headache rack my horizontals I all made those all diamonds for the customer. 
so that one, it looked cool, and two, you didn't have water sitting on top of the horizontals that it could run off. So the V-block comes in very handy. But in general, I would highly recommend this tool, and I would almost say this would be in my like third and fourth tool range to get. Like if you're wanting to just get started with fabrication, get yourself a welder, a drill, and a grinder first, and after that, I would honestly get one of these. I had port bands before this, I had abrasive chop saws and grinders, and you save so much time with this thing and the accuracy that you get out of it, it just doesn't even compare. And even let's say if you can't quite afford the uh, lower dollar one without the chip tray that's 375, I believe that Evolution also makes one that is only under $200. <laughs> That one, the base is not quite as heavy duty and I believe it doesn't have the quick release on the clamps. So you have to spin it all the way in and have to spin it all the way out. But still, if you, that's what you need to get started and just to get a couple jobs out the door, it's so much faster and more accurate than cutting with a grinder. So if you don't already have one, I would highly recommend this tool for your fabrication shop. And I think that's gonna conclude our episode three of Fab Tool Friday. So if you wanna see more fabrication content, click some of the links that are gonna pop up here. If you wanna be notified of upcoming videos, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, it's free to do so. I love to hear your guys' comments and opinions down below. Make sure to do that and go build something. See you next Friday.